Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Andy, and today I'm here to share with you our family's five-day plan for exploring Singapore. As many of you know, we are in the process of moving our family from San Francisco to Malaysia. And part of the plan is to actually explore the area of Singapore and Malaysia before we make the move. This is a trip I've been looking forward to for so long, and we're leaving next Monday, so excited. Today, I'm only going to share our plans for Singapore because the plan for Kuala Lumpur and Penang will be its own video. So if you wanna see what we have planned for that, see you on the next video. So the plan for Singapore starts off with our flight, of course, from SFO to Changi. We land on Tuesday at 7 p.m. And the first thing we want to do is to go explore the jewel. There's the Rain Vortex Fountain. I'm sure you've seen it in all the videos and Instagrams. And there's a nightly show at 8 p.m. and 9 p.m. So hopefully, the land at 7, we should make it to the Rain Vortex by 8 and catch a show. If not, then we'll grab dinner in the airport and then watch the 9 p.m. show before catching a grab to the, to the hotel. Our hotel is located in Bugis Junction, and so it's very centrally located for food, nightlife, all sorts of things. The next day is Wednesday, and we want to do the Gardens by the Bay. And the reasoning is it's a weekday, so likely less tourists than on a weekend. So we want to do some of the more popular attractions on the weekdays. The hotel is about a half hour walk from the gardens. So the plan is to walk from the hotel and along the way, visit the Marina Bay street circuit for the F1 race. Unfortunately, I'm a F1 fan and I did not think to check the dates for the Singapore Grand Prix before I booked my flight. So we missed this, the race by just two days. But still, we get to see the racetrack and hopefully I'll catch the race there next year. After seeing the racetrack, we'll walk by the Mer Lion, which is the famous half lion, half fish statue or fountain that sprays water into the bay. Then we'll walk over the Helix Bridge and into the gardens. The first stop in the gardens is the Sela V restaurant at the Marina Bay Sands. The Marina Bay Sands, as all of you know, is the famous hotel that looks like it has a cruise ship on top and it has the famous infinity pool. So there are three ways to experience the Marina Bay Sand rooftop. Number one is to be at a hotel guest. You can access the rooftop and the infinity pool and do everything that you can as a guest. However, it is very, very expensive and so not in our plan this time. The second way is to go to the sky deck, which you have to buy a ticket for, and then you can go to the top and be on the deck and enjoy the views. However, the third way, which I think to be the best, is to go to the C'est La Vie restaurant, which is right next door to the Sky Deck. You can get the same views, but you get to enjoy food and drinks at the same time. You do have to pay, which is I think $30 Singaporean, but that amount applies to your food and drink bill, so might as well enjoy it. After lunch, we plan to explore the Super Tree Grove, check out all the sites, and especially the Cloud Forest Dome. And I'm a big Avatar fan, so I heard that the Cloud Forest Dome is now Avatar theme, which is very exciting because uh, I would love to kind of live on Pandora if I have the choice. Then we can go see the Flower Dome, although I've heard from multiple people that it is not amazing, so do it if we have time. There are other attractions around the gardens, so we plan on taking our time to explore these attractions before the nighttime show. The first one is the Garden Rhapsody Show at the Super Tree Grove, and that's at 7.45 p.m. and 8.45 p.m. After that, there's the Spectra Light Show along the water, which is at 8 p.m. So we should be able to catch both shows within half hour. And after that, go back to the hotel and rest for the night. The next day is Thursday. And the first thing we plan to do is to go to the Singapore Botanic Gardens. I hear this is one of the best botanic gardens in the world, and it's free to enter. So we're gonna go check it out. I personally love botanic gardens and I used to live right by the San Francisco Botanical Gardens and that was always a treat just to walk through and enjoy the scenery and peace and quiet. After the botanic gardens, we plan on going to Orchard Road, which we hear is a very popular shopping district. We're not big shoppers, but it will still be a nice area to explore, check out the different shops, see if there are any souvenirs that are interesting to buy and also have lunch in that area. After Orchard Road, we are going to Fort Canning Park. We like parks and also with our daughter, it'd be nice just to walk around somewhere peaceful and green and maybe have a little picnic or sit on the grass. After Fort Canning Park, we'll head over to the Clark Key area, 
where it is known for nightlife and dining. Check out some of the restaurants, maybe eat there, not sure. Uh, and then retire back to the hotel for a quick break. After Clark Key, we'll head back to the hotel and rest for a bit because that evening we have plans to have dinner with our friends at a interesting looking speakeasy near the Bugis Junction area. If you want to know which speakeasy I'm going to, please check out the video where I chronicle our trip. The next day is Friday and we're exploring Chinatown. Even though I'm Chinese and I lived in New York and San Francisco, I still enjoy going to Chinatowns. I think they're interesting. They're not exactly China, but always can find good food there and some interesting souvenirs to get. We're starting off at the Buddha Tooth Relic Temple, known to be one of the top attractions in Chinatown. After that, we'll wander around, check out the different shops and restaurants. And I plan on going to the Tea Chapter Trading Company because I love a good tea ceremony. I enjoyed them in China. Uh, and I hope this would be something similar to that. Later on, we'll stop by the Sky Garden at Capital Spring. It's a garden on top of a building with great views and it's free. So why not? For dinner, the plan is to hit up La Passat, a famous hawker center with lots of different street foods. And I'm really looking forward to trying some local Singaporean delicacies. Since it's a Friday night, I hope to enjoy some nightlife. We plan on getting a babysitter at the hotel and then head out for a rooftop bar. I'm not sure which one to go to yet, but right now I'm thinking about the Ali Beer rooftop bar. If you have one that you know is better or something more interesting, please let me know in the comments. Saturday is our last full day in Singapore and we plan on taking it pretty easy. A friend of mine is playing in a beach ultimate frisbee tournament on Sentosa Island. So we plan on going there and enjoying the beach. It'll be on Palawan Beach, so we'll have some beach time, watch our friend play, and then maybe explore the island if we have time. That evening, since it's our five-year wedding anniversary, we're going on the Royal Albatross Sunset Dinner Cruise. I love a good dinner cruise, and this one looks spectacular, so really looking forward to that. After dinner, if we have the energy for it, we may go for a stroll along somewhere pretty, but we have a baby with us, so probably not too late. Sunday is our last day and we fly out at around 1 p.m. So not much time. We'll probably try out the breakfast buffet at the hotel or grab a quick lunch before heading to the airport. So that's our five day plan for Singapore. I really want to know what you guys think of it. If there's anything I miss, anything I need to add, anything that's family friendly for two parents traveling with a baby. I plan to share our plans for Kuala Lumpur and Penang in the next video. So stay tuned if you're curious what we are planning to do. Thank you guys for watching and please like and subscribe if you're interested in sharing more about our journey and um, see you next time.